Um, all right, so we've already done this once, but not just yeah. specifically for you. So, um, yeah. and what was funny, right, is um, I ended up, we had such a good time last time, you know, we totally forgot about not cussing and everything. So I immediately like, oh, I, I, I took our hour and 15 minute conversation between the three of you, brought it to work and played it while I was working and then like had notes. Okay, bleep F here. Bleep F had all these notes. So, so that's it. Um, so anyway, we'll get started. I, I love your clippers. Uh, is that like a, is that like a, it almost looks like a hockey clippers jersey. A little bit, yeah. Uh, every now and then, NBA shop has like these sales, and they have yeah. like these weird shirts that nobody wants. I'm like, yeah. I want that shirt. No, and, it's uh, a great looking shirt. Yeah, it's it definitely a sweater. It has like all these logos all over. Oh yeah, yeah I weird. love it. That's great. <laughs> all right, uh, we are recording. Um, before I forget, um, if I want to post this on YouTube, are you cool? Oh, uh, please. Okay. Please. I need more stuff on YouTube. All right. Sounds great. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lessing Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, and joining me is a return guest. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan was here as a trio, mm -hmm. and now then he's, he's doing a solo album. Right, like he's he's yeah. he's getting yeah. rid of the band, and now he's going solo. Yeah, uh, welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you, thank you for having me back. Uh, so much fun last time. Uh, I would do this every week without the podcast. We can just talk about whatever you want. So, yeah. uh, thank you. You know what's funny is, um, at least I find it amusing. Um, I had um, Skip on the show, and he does the Skip and Josh podcast they're two Canadian guys they used to do a lot of sports then the pandemic happened and he said basically every Saturday morning uh Skip says I would call Josh and we would catch up and like after about six months we're like you know we should record this and do a podcast because <laughs> it was just you know he said we would be talking about this stuff whether we had a podcast or not yeah so I know that feeling yeah, well, what's 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 been going on with you since the last time I talked to you? What's up? Well, let's see. Uh, the well, first off, introduce yourself and oh yeah, hi. Yourself yeah, and then we'll go into that. Uh, my my name is Ryan Harvey Piercy. I live in Los Angeles, California, uh, for the past eleven years. Um, I love Bruce Springsteen, and I make all my friends listen to it, whether they want to or not. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, um, things okay. You know, our governor has lost his mind. You don't yeah. need a mask. And hey, let's open up everything 100%. Um, yeah. You know, so like there's somebody behind the scenes doing like like an algorithm of like, well, if this many people have the vaccine or might take the vaccine, then we can do this and that. And it's just, it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. That's what it feels like. As I recorded this though, um, I did get my first uh vaccine i got the uh, i got the first shot of pfizer it was interesting uh wednesday night wednesday night are usually podcast night ryan uh, mm -hmm. i do uh at six o'clock dallas time i record every week my doctor who podcast with my buddy charles <laughs> and then okay. um i usually at eight and then possibly nine i do uh spring scene podcast and uh -huh. that way i try to and my wife will tell you i'm not always successful but that way only one night is taken away you know of us spending time together with me in front of the mic and so i had had a podcast and so it's like 10 o'clock and i I'm like okay time to go to bed and i pull up my phone and it says hey due to cancellations you can get a vaccine tomorrow and so i'm immediately I, I make a screenshot of that you know like on your iphone you can take a picture and i'm texting it to my boss and to my coworkers. like yeah i'm gonna be late tomorrow <laughs> you know? oh, yeah and, and everyone was laughing right like absolutely you don't like i don't care what meetings you have scheduled if they can get you in we've got to do this so um and it's, it's interesting here um Texas Motor Speedway, this huge raceway, is yeah. set up, and you everything's in your car. You drive in, you they they 
you show them your ID, you show them your little scan, they scan you like, okay, are you Jesse Jackson, June 3rd, 1959? Yep, okay, go go to the next tent. So you yeah. turn the next tent, they hand you a clipboard, they said, okay, fill out these questions, sign here, flip it over, sign it over the back, okay, go to the next tent. So you go to the next tent, you're sitting there filling out everything and then they're like okay are you done yes all right the next <laughs> is where you're going to get your shot which arm do you want it in i'm like this arm's fine okay great roll up your sleeve um what we're going to do is the next tent they're going to give you the vaccine and then you're going to drive and we're going to wait you in your car 15 minutes if you start feeling weird honk your horn if not, we're going to let you go. <laughs> and so, you know, I roll down the window. The lady's like, uh, is this the arm you wanted in? She goes, okay. They shoot the vaccine. Wow. They like, give you a little card. Like, okay, go, drive ahead. You drive ahead. And I'm sitting there and like um, the guy comes by and I roll down the window and he's like, okay, are you, are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling fine. All right. If you aren't, he said, we're going to wait here about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'll wave you when you're finished. In the meantime, just honk your horn, do something if you start feeling weird. Okay. Oh, so man. here's all these cars and then they wave you on and then you leave. It took 45 minutes and I never wow. left the car. <laughs> wow. Oh, and then, and now, and now you, you have to go back in a couple of weeks, yeah, right? In a couple of weeks for yeah, vaccine number two. Yeah. Wow. That's so insane. yeah. I'm still not comfortable going to the Texas Rangers opening day, though, where they're going to have uh, 40,000 people all in one place. Oh, man, that's tough. That's yeah. Tough. Like, yeah, like I would like, oh, man, if if they offered me to go sit courtside at the Clippers, would I take it? Let's someone was like, I don't know, man. I don't <laughs> you well, know. It's so great point because yeah. uh, after the vaccine, we're sitting in the living room and my mm -hmm. wife looks over and says, so, um, you know, are you feeling okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah. She goes, so now then let's, you know, you're gonna get your shot in a couple of weeks. What are you comfortable doing? Yeah. And she goes, and, okay, obviously if Bruce toured, <laughs> whether you had a vaccine or not, you're going to go to the tour. I, that's, that goes without <laughs> saying, like, sure. you, know, she, you know, is there anything else? And I said, yeah. well, thank you for understanding that hopefully Bruce is smarter than I am. He's not going to tour until things are better. But yes, if Bruce announced the tour right now, I would like, okay, well, if I get if I get COVID, I get COVID, but I'm not missing it. Just their spring steam perform. Uh, and I told her that, you know, I, I the thing I miss the most is I have a group of about six or seven buddies and we used to about every month would meet to play poker and yeah. it was mostly just an excuse to catch up and mm -hmm. we have not done that in over a year that I, I miss seeing them I you know some of them I see doing, doing zooms and we'll visit but we have not and we talked about playing virtual poker but we're like mm -hmm. no the reality is what we like is being in the same room and complaining about our jobs and talking about, you know, things that are going on. So I think that would be one of the first things I want, along with seeing some friends like for dinner. Yeah, 100 percent. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to circle back, you, you I, I haven't seen Doctor Who, mm -hmm. uh, but that show and I saw that Dark Shadows is on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. and I, I i might jump into those oh interesting. <clears throat> yeah because yeah. i've um, never seen those so talk to me um you know i always like to start at the beginning and like i said you you've talked a little bit on your previous show and i'm kidding but you know you levi and um jeff jeff all mm -hmm. talked about meeting at the book signing and kind of becoming friends of course i guess you and levi had been friends longer but we didn't get into your musical background. So talk to me about growing up. Where did you grow up and what kind of music did your family listen to? Oh man, um, growing up, uh, well, it was just, I guess, like, like just base information. Like I grew up in central Arkansas. Okay. Um, but like, it's, like, I was just fascinated by oldies growing okay. up. We had like an oldie station, Cool 95, playing the hits of the 50s, 60s and 70s um and i was obsessed with like oldies music from maybe five ages five to 12 who knows okay. uh 
to like and then that's that's when i first heard the beatles was like they had played hard days night i'll never forget like there's certain songs that just stick in your brain because the first time you hear them and border runs the one with, with mm-hmm. me and bruce Springsteen with the beatles it was hard days night and i'll never forget hearing that song and then just becoming obsessed with the beatles like to the point it was the first band where I listened to every album, every version of a different song. And I'm like in my preteens, like I could not get enough of it. Uh, and this is before the internet. Like, so I'm just like buying everything I can, talking to whoever. Oh, uh, fun fact, Jesse, uh, when I was in fifth grade, I was the most popular kid in school because the Beatles anthologies came out on TV and everyone was talking about the Beatles. I already knew everything about them, Jesse. <laughs> I knew everything. Um, <laughs> I was the only nerd at school who liked the Beatles <laughs> at one point. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's, it's always been rock and roll. I didn't have like, like now, now I love jazz and stuff too, mm-hmm. but like I didn't have a jazz upbringing, like my family, super blue collar family. And my, my dad was a fireman and a landscaper. My mom was a nurse. Um, and at the time, I didn't realize how conservative they are, were at the time. Now, like, I'm like, oh, wow, super conservative people. But uh, yeah. Uh, so it's it's crazy that I even escaped that. I don't know how I got out of that shell. I have no idea. Um, but uh, yeah, so just like, and I think like most 90s kids, you get caught up in like TRL after school yeah. MTV and stuff. And then maybe it was just like a combination of not liking the boy band craze or or something like, but I, I heard Bruce Springsteen on the radio. I was like, oh, this is my new thing. This is what I'm going to listen to from here on out. And then I had a friend who would like just berate me. He's like, that's all you listen to. And then my other friend would be like, but it's the best thing to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how did you get from central Arkansas to LA? Um, by by car. car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got that horrible joke out of the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um yeah man uh I, I went like I was in college I did theater in college and then uh I was fa- failing college I fail was failing college horribly like I was where were you killing going to every- school uh the University of Central Arkansas okay. uh uh home of Scotty Pippen Chicago Bulls there you uh, go that's our claim to fame <laughs> um but yeah I was I was failing horribly in college I was acing every theater class and failing everything else to the point where like uh, my professor had to sit me down and goes, hey, listen, I can't let you do any more theater stuff. You're not giving it probation. Like as if I was like a football player. Yeah. Uh, it was like to say, I didn't know that they did that for everybody. I just thought it was for <laughs> sports people. But yeah. <laughs> um, and so he's like, listen, you you need to get your shit together or move to New York or LA. And it's like, oh, okay. I didn't, okay, great, good. Um, and then I managed to Chili's for a year. And then I moved to LA, me and a friend, she was joining the Peace Corps. She knew I wanted to move to LA and her training was out in LA. And we made a plan. So, hey, in five months, we're going to LA. And then I put my two dogs in the backseat of her car. I had a giant army duffel bag. And uh, I had a best friend who I loved Bruce with during high school was already living out here. And I ended up sleeping on his couch for the first few months. I, I moved to LA. I was back in June of 09. So, and I've been, uh, been here ever since a lot of people have come and gone, uh, and I'm still here. So Mm -hmm. there we go. Uh, what's your day gig? Don't you? uh, Uh, Yeah. Um, uh, Levi and I work for, uh, the stranger things drive through experience in downtown LA. So if you're a fan of stranger things, listen to this podcast, be super jealous because yes. I work, <laughs> I work downtown for Stranger Things. Um, I've never seen an episode of the show, but uh, I'm in the show, and uh, yeah, it's it's super fun. It's it, it's live theater, so just so no one freaks out listening to this, uh, yeah. everyone's in their cars. Uh, you drive through, you park your car, and you watch the stuff happening around your car, and you you can hear the audio through your radio. Um, it's super fun. The um, did you? Do you not watch the show because it doesn't you don't want to affect your performance or <laughs> just a matter of those it just worked out that way 
<laughs> no, I mean, I'm just not a fan of the show. <laughs> like, I tried watching the show, and it was not my thing. I was like, oh, I, I can see how people enjoy this. Um, and it, yeah, it's just it's just not my thing. That's... So I love, but I, I cause well, I guess because I like that stuff growing up already. Like, mm -hmm. like they're yeah. wearing Ghostbusters costumes in the shows. Like, yeah, I loved Ghostbusters growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess in a timeline, these kids would be older than me when I was their age. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've already kind of lived that life. I, I did all that stuff. Um, so I, I guess it's fascinating to people who watch it. Now, we do. Do you watch the show? Have you, have you I seen have it? seen a couple of episodes. It's one of those things that you were kind of talking about like Doctor Who or something else that I know Stranger Things is really good. I've watched yeah. a couple episodes and then we got distracted. I, I know I need to go back and see it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, mean, so I, I, don't, I don't binge television. Uh, okay. I'm not like a binger. Yeah. So uh, I don't think, I don't think television is meant to be binged. I think you get burned out on it. Uh, I think binging television can like ruin shows for you. Uh -huh. um we're like uh, i love curb your enthusiasm but if i watch more than two episodes in a row uh -huh. i, I want to shoot myself uh because uh -huh. he's so hard to swallow so yeah yeah i tend to be more of a you know i guess because we have that ability now and and i love both of them like um i on the phantom zone podcast we've been talking about WandaVision. And so mm -hmm. every week we get a new episode to discuss and we have a lot of fun and I enjoy that. But there is something I also enjoyable about, okay, let's just next, 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 next. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, but there are certain shows um, like uh, Prodigal Son, on fox you know linda's yeah. like i was like yeah i wouldn't want to binge this it's just yeah. too dark and it, you know i need that break to see that um the you you already talked a little bit about loving the beatles in high school and finding bruce um did how much of your bruce fandom just stay through that's been a constant companion in your life i take it yeah, there's always like, I, I think what's cool about the music is, and I'm sure it's the same for any artist that that, that you relate to or love. Uh, like, I used to, like, I, one of the first albums I really loved was the Live in New York album. And then, you know, I left it behind and then, yeah, uh, like, dug into other stuff. And then he's still releasing new material. So you, so you got to listen to all that. And then just recently, I just turned on that Live in New York album again. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I forgot, I had forgotten how good this feels to listen to, you know, and then you just jump right, but it means something different. Uh, like, like Land of Hope and Dreams means something deeper now to me than it did when I first heard it in high school, you know? Yeah. Uh, Cause that's literally, that's kind of what I did. Like I packed up my suitcase and I moved to somewhere else that I wanted to be, you know? Um, so yeah. it, it's it's really cool growing up, like like, like the music grows with you it's like it stays the same, but it means something different with you as you grow older. You know, it really is that we'll take what we can carry and we'll leave the rest, right? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, and, and there, um, I have the same thing, you know, uh, my dad was in the army, so we moved around a lot. But when he retired, uh, my mom and him divorced. And so by the eighth grade, I was living in Louisiana and I stayed there all the way so that would have been like 71 72 and then linda and i got married in 84 and 86 we moved to dallas so for like 10 that 10 12 years you know i was in a small town lake charles louisiana mm -hmm. uh you know that had um you know what's what's strange ryan and you will appreciate this right growing up in arkansas um i had it was weird to me when I moved to Dallas and there was only one network, right? Like, because living in Lake Charles, there was the CBS affiliate out of Beaumont, Texas and the CBS affiliate out of Lafayette, right? Uh -huh. Like, so I had a choice of two different, uh, you know, and NBC, 
affiliate was like Charles was the only channel. And, and, you know, I had no concept of like, you mean you can have all networks at one city yeah. and there's like, <laughs> there's three or four different local, f you know, newscasts to choose from. I, yeah. you know, it just, it was a uh, weird to me. Um, sure. So then when we moved to Dallas, it, it, it was it was a big deal for us you know yeah. we had never thought about just you know we packed everything up in a u-haul and we're driving up and all of a sudden you know we're getting an apartment linda had found a job and i'm like okay i'll hopefully find a job when i get here and so yeah. uh it's kind of crazy now to think about yeah that. it's man it's so weird like just jumping into something and like knowing it's gonna work out like like, yeah, my, my wife has a job. You just have to sprinkle the seeds and see where they land and see what catches and grows. Yeah. You know, and it, and you and you know that you're a good enough gardener to help it grow. It's going to grow. Right. It's, everything's going to be just fine. You know, so, yeah, it's fucking incredible. Uh, yeah. Did you um, know once you got here, just no turning back your you this has become home to you, L.A.? Yeah, yeah, I, I I knew that immediately. It's like, uh, like just pride and embarrassment wouldn't let me move back home. Um, <laughs> for sure, I knew that once I moved here, I was I was like being stranded on an island. Uh, I was not ever going to leave. Um, and, and then like you, you like see the massive homeless problem here in LA. Just so many people displaced. You're like, oh wow, maybe that's how that happens. <laughs> it's the combination of mental illness and stubbornness. Yeah. Uh, so I'm so grateful that that hasn't happened to me. Um, but yeah, like this is this is where I want to. If I ever moved to anywhere else, uh, you know, and then <laughs> this this might pop up every like every five minutes. Not not to be too political. Um, mm -hmm. But if if Donald Trump was elected to a second term, I I. I strongly contemplated moving to montreal or like yeah. toronto like i because I, I do like living in a big city i love i love new yeah. york i love chicago i love la uh and then at the time montreal was not sounding too bad it's like montreal yeah. it's pretty close to new york it's mm -hmm. uh it's like it's like the new york of canada <laughs> like, yeah exactly so uh yeah but yeah I, I love it out of here i love it if you ever come out here please please hit me up because oh, i will. will show you all over town well, I, I was thinking, right, like as someone who's uh, done acting, right, like um, I guess I go to Vancouver so I can rotate being on the CW. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Shows, yes. Right. Because I guess five out of the six of the CW Arrowverse shows all film in Vancouver. So, uh, oh, yeah, so ooh, yeah. 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 So I guess that would be a good place to move if you're going to go. What else are they filming? Um, there's a show that my girlfriend and I have been watching, Resident Alien. Yes. Uh, with with the Alan Alan um, Tuna. Alan Tuna Tuna. Yeah, yes. Yeah, super super cute little. It, it's it's a sci-fi show, so yes. you take that however you want to take it. Uh, mm -hmm. But super cute, super fun. So please please check that out. I, I'm uh, I'm watching it. I I I I've got three or four episodes on the DVD, and my my issue is. Um, I like it, but it it starts in a dark place where he ends up killing yeah. someone, you know? And you're like, wait a right minute. Right off the bat, yeah. Yeah, this is Walsh <laughs> from Firefly. He's our buddy. <laughs> uh, but it is, if you get past that darkness, it is very funny. And he's, you know, the idea of trying to fit in, um, it is um, the... Uh, like Northern exposure to the extreme, right? Like this. Yeah, person. oh yeah. Yeah, if love trying to learn. Yeah, love exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do. Uh, I, I've enjoyed it. I think it's really interesting that you're doing that. Um, so I, I think we asked this last time, but for those of you who may not have missed it, um, the number of times you've seen Bruce live is not a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are. But have you counted how many times you've seen him live? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's 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 real easy. It's it's not as much as I as I want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to. I would love. How do people follow him on tour? I don't. Any band. I don't. Yeah. I don't know how they do that. It's just it's the resources, the stamina. Yeah. Um. Jeez. I don't. Oh man. Uh. But okay. So I saw him, the Rising Tour, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, um, uh, Magic Tour, Charlotte, North Carolina. 
and uh, Wrecking Ball here in LA. Okay. Um, and then the River Tour in St. Louis. Okay. That's where my my best friend lives in St. Louis. Uh, and that 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 was that was the best. That was by far yeah. the best one. That was amazing, 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 amazing show. You know, um, I think yeah. there was something about that tour that um, it. You know, we had before the tour started. You had lost David Bowie. Um, you know, Glenn yeah. Fry. Uh, you know, they lost Prince during that tour. And I think the idea, what I said is that as they're playing together, they're aware that the road in front of them is shorter than the road behind them. And yeah. that they know that we only have a limited number of times where we can tour again. And, you know, it's been very well documented. This is the tour that wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, okay. Why, why is that? Um, well, what happened is they were going to put out this river box set. Mm -hmm. And then, so they started talking about, well, to promote the box set, maybe we get the band together and we do a few gigs. And they're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. And as they started touring, they started talking, well, you know, if we're going to do three or four shows, why don't we do a dozen shows? And then they're like, okay, well, but if we're going to do a dozen shows and all of a sudden they do a full tour and then they're yeah. like, well, we've got us together. We should go to Europe and then they do <laughs> Europe and then they go, okay, well now then we need to come back and do a second round of tour. And so this truly was this, you know, uh, I've talked to people that have talked to people right that have said that it it true and they, they talk about that interview where they kind of it's well if we're going to do this we might as well do this we do this and next thing you know it's a year and a half you know, <laughs> you wow. know world tour did you see any of the um like i i, I think i remember them doing born, born in the u.s not born, uh, born born to run not like tours, but shows. They would just play yeah. the whole album front right. to back. And I think they did Darkness. They do also do Darkness. Yeah, so, you know, the theory, the thought was that when they toured working on the dream, working mm -hmm. on the dream, that very quickly, either the audience got bored with the material or they got bored with the material. And that's when yeah. he started doing, you know, he did Darkness, he did Born and Run, he did The River, of uh, which they thought they would never do again, which was kind of interesting that they ended up doing that again. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he did um, Greetings, you know, this, that. So yes, they, uh, I have the only the only show I've attended was, and I was lucky enough to go to four river shows is when they do the river back to front. Mm. I've never been to another full show uh, album show. I remember when I saw the news that was happening, I was, I was just so poor living in LA. I was like, I was just like clawing my eyes. I was like, why did I move to LA? How come I'm not out there right now on the East coast watching these shows? And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, um, <laughs> My wife and I, um, as people who've been married over 30 years tend to do, we have, you know, random conversations. And I don't know how we got into this, but several years ago, like, Lynn is like, oh, so if you won the lottery, what would you do, right? And I'm <laughs> like, um, you know, I said, well, let's forget all the, you know, set up a trust fund for the kid and, you know, pay off debts and, you know, all the, like, you're just talking about, you know, stupid money. I yeah. would, the next time Bruce toured, I would go to every show. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, she's like, she's like, well, what happens to me during this? I'm like, <laughs> you can come. I mean, we're going to have enough money. You could travel. You could go to, you know, we could schedule races for you to go to. My wife loves 5Ks and 10Ks and she's done marathons. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, like, oh, you know, wow. we could do that. You know, you could do that. I'm like, I'm not talking that you're just saying, what would I want to do in this fantasy? In this fantasy yeah. world, you're coming with me and you're enjoying and you go to the show whether you're not. But, you know, we're, you know, we're dating, we're, we're going to bourbon distilleries and we're doing all these other sightseeing while Bruce is touring. So oh, it's so funny, Mitch, like my, my uh, girlfriend, we like, we, we, we enjoy doing things together, but right. there's some things where I need a certain level of enthusiasm. Right. Or just, just, it would do, it would, 
service me better if she just didn't come maybe just did her own thing like i've taken her to clipper games and like i lose my shit at clipper games a hundred percent you know and so i I get basketball is not her thing so when i look over and she's just sitting there and like she's watching the game she's enjoying herself just fine but it's not matching my enthusiasm yeah then it kind of brings so i i couldn't imagine bringing her to a bruce springsteen show and then her not enjoying it as much as me. <laughs> like, uh, so, so, one of my best friends, um, Sam, is he, he? He's a huge Springsteen fan, but by far, Dylan is his guy. You know, yeah, he sure, yeah. he like like when Bob came to Dallas um, and did a three night stand at the uh, House of Blues. Oh wow! You know, yeah. uh, Sam took three vacation days. And, mm-hmm. you know, went to every show. Um, awesome. And that was the first time I thought about, wow, you know, you can go to more than one show per, you know, tour. Ding! Yeah. You know, like, oh, that's allowed. Oh, anyway. So um, the uh, Dylan was playing in um, around Burlington, Vermont, which is where he's from. And his dad and his stepmother still lived there. And mm-hmm. so they got them tickets. And Sam said, uh, while he was a really appreciative that they got it, he said part of it was because it was like, oh, is this a song you wanted to hear? Oh, or <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, they kept talking to him during the show. Like, oh, oh my oh, God. Are you, oh, is, no. oh, 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 you know, is you look really happy. Is this something you weren't expecting to hear? And he's just like, oh, oh no. Just, 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 just you know. um, and then I, my son and I, um, it, he grew up in Dallas, so therefore sports is in his blood, you know, mm-hmm. so he is just a, like, default ESPN is on, you know, his TV is set to ESPN, right? Like, this is, sure, a, yeah. you know, huge Mavericks fan, Cowboy fan, uh, you know, absolutely Texas Rangers, but will watch any sporting event anywhere, um, loves wrestling. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so Lynn and I, like she says, I don't like to go to the Ranger game with you and Chris. Y'all watch the game. No. Oh. <laughs> you know? Like, you yeah. know, to her, this is just a big picnic, right? Like, okay, sure. let's, you know, like, you know, hey, we're outside. It's beautiful. Let's get a beer. We can have a food. And so. Well, yeah, people do that at baseball games. There's right. there groups of people who like, hey, let's just go to the Dodgers. And I, I don't know if they have the same thing in other parks here at Dodger Stadium. They have these outfield tickets where it's yeah. all you can eat food. Yeah. So you get all the popcorn, whatever. So like you can bring a buddy and they don't care about baseball. They just chow down on hot dogs all night. Right. And so, uh, so Chris and I now then when we tell her, okay, yes, you know, he'll say, mom, we're going to go to the game and we promise we will talk to you. (laughs) You (laughs) So sweet. (laughs) You know, but it is because it's true. Like, um, and then my brother-in-law, uh, Clayton, and Chris and I used to go to a lot of games together and we would, we, you know, we we're watching the game and there would be casual conversations between innings, but you know, mostly we're just enjoying the game. Right. And so, yeah, I just love that. Linda's like, yeah, I don't want to yeah. go with y'all anymore. Y'all don't talk to us. So we're going to go. Um, so yeah, I, I get that about the Clippers like, okay. Um, and one of the things that's worked out in our marriage is um, she loves to go camping and um, she's yeah. found, in fact, a couple, uh, in a couple of weeks, her, her sister and two of their best friends, all four of them are going camping. And she's like, I know you don't like camping. I know you would go camping just to be nice, to support me. Yeah. But it's actually, it's easier for me to go without you so I don't have to worry about you. Right. And, and it's. And it's so healthy. It's a healthy yeah. thing. Like you're like you're a unit, but you also have your separate interests. And that's yes. you know, and that gives you your like like just natural space from yes. each other. Uh yeah. I'm planning a trip right now for my birthday in July to go meet William Shatner <laughs> at the Star Trek thing. Nice. Uh, up yeah, up up in Ticonderoga, New York. And my you know, and I'm 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 different than all my other friends. Like I'm not married and don't have kids. My best friend in St. Louis has 
just now had his third kid. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. It's like, I just got to talk to the wife real quick yeah. and verify everything. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> there's, like, yeah. there's a slight chance that this might not happen if his mother-in-law can't help his wife with the kids that one weekend. Yeah, so exactly. we're, we're like crossing our fingers. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, we talked about what you said to Bruce. Uh, if you Are you going to get a photo op with Shatner? And have you thought about what you want to say to him? Oh, dude, okay. So <laughs> this is... This is, um, uh, we're, oh man, I really hope this happens. So at this event, uh, the big ticket item is $1,500. Okay. Uh, and it's this two day thing. You don't have to spend $1,500. Like I think like the, like the smallest ticket is 50 bucks, mm-hmm. but for $1,500, there's this whole list of stuff you do. You're basically William Shatner's best friend. Um, and it's like this dinner with William Shatner. It's, it's also like a limited ticket quantity um so it's not like hundreds of people i would hope not and then yeah. you know you're like on the replica bridge there's a replica bridge in ticonderoga and i guess you like talk to him meet him and if i i don't know he's 90 years old i don't know i've read interviews with him he sounds pretty coherent yeah i don't know where he is and I, where is somebody at night i had a grandma who lived to be 100 and she was still there mentally yeah so, exactly um I don't just how much I love Boston legal. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I would say. Um, yeah. You know, that's what my, I have a, Tom is a huge uh, Star Trek fan period, but also William Shatner. And he talked about that with Boston legal, Denny Crane, right? He yeah, said, Denny Crane. Um, he said in baseball terms, um, he may not have the he can't hit the wide range of pitches that he used to but if you yeah. get it in that park he can hit yes. it out of the park and he says that's shatner and denny crane right like i don't know 100 percent what he was but when you give him that set role um and you know obviously i grew up on the original star trek but i loved him and james spader that that yes. friendship and love they had for each other was amazing Yes. Well, just like people, oh, I hate when people shit on Shatner. Yes. Um, be, like there's there's some actors who their persona, it, it it's not it transcends what acting is. It's just who they are, and yeah. his persona became Captain Kirk. Like, yeah, that's who Captain Kirk is. So whether you think Shatner's a good or bad actor, it doesn't matter because he created the Captain Kirk character. Yes. And I like. I love watching Captain Kirk in the movies, in the in the show. I just like that, like bravado. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he gives one of the best performances of his life in Wrath of Khan. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll watch Wrath of Khan all day. Yeah. So yeah, dude, a hundred percent. I'm I'm on board. Uh, dude, have you heard his album with uh Ben Ben Folds? Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite albums. Yeah, it's been so much fun. Um, I have a I have a theory that Nathan Fillion is yeah. this generation's William Shatner. Oh, interesting. Shut up. That's a, wow. Uh, because, um, you know, a uh, small science fiction show went on to do a, you know, he's now done two other series, right? He did Castle. He's now doing the yeah. Ricky. Ricky seems to be really engaged with fans. Uh, yes. Very, you know, both Canadian, uh, you know, both seem to be just, you um, I'm sure people have their criticisms about their ego and ever, but seem to be overly good guys. So, um, yes. yeah, I, I, you know, I think that's, um, that's my theory anyway, that he is, you know, and not a bad, I, you know, if I was Nathan Filling and I'd go, yes, I'll take that anyway. If I can 100%. be considered, yeah, Shatner, that's awesome. Well, you, you've, I don't know. I, I've heard things about Shatner where like Galaxy Quest is based yeah. on, Right. Like William Shatner's experience and how there there is a part of him that can just like like want to strangle the fans, but he understands that they're the reason he's there. <laughs> like, yes. uh, like I, I, I'm sure you've the same thing. Like the whole story about in Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen's character hearing the fans shit on him yeah. while in the bathroom is based on a real shit Shatner thing. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Oh. Um. Side note: Have you seen Doctor Horrible sing along blog? Yes. Well, Nathan Fillion, like it's that's a because you said it just not, that's a total Shatner role. It is what he does in that show. Oh yeah. man, yeah, that's a great. I never thought about that. That's a great comparison. Yeah. Um, 
so let's get it back to Bruce a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. This is good. No, I love this. Um, <laughs> share to me about favorite albums and songs. What what has helped you and, and that you keep going to? You just talked about Live in New York. You went back to that and went, man, this is why mm -hmm. I love this. Are there other albums or songs that kind of mean a deal to you? Man, I love, I love Drive All Night. Uh, love, love that song so much. And it's not, it's not just songs. It's like, like, like the way that they're presented to, uh, so like, I, I think Atlantic city is great on Nebraska. Um, and it affects me a different way than when I hear it from live in New York, it's, sure. it feels like a completely different song. Um, uh, but like, yeah, uh, darkness on the edge of town. It's, it's super cliche, but like that, that's like a like a top five song yeah uh just and then I, I i'm sure you've noticed this when i say it through like yeah duh ryan but like um like how he changes the lyrics from the album to what what live album there's a live album he changes the lyrics um oh, we're, uh, and, and only okay you're gonna have to help me, help, help me on this uh on the album it's uh i lost my money and I lost my wife. Those things don't seem to matter much to me now. And then on, on one of the live albums, he says, I lost my faith and I lost my wife. Yeah. I can't remember which album it was, but just like, yeah. Um, it's one of those things like that kind of puts other bands to shame that like, it's not any other band's responsibility, but when I saw Vampire Weekend for the first time, and I love Vampire Weekend, yeah. one of my favorite bands, but like just to see them perform live verbatim from the album is so disappointing when you're used to Bruce Springsteen making the live experience a completely different one-of-a-kind experience uh yeah. yeah yeah no I was just gonna I, I just had um a couple months ago David Fetter who is a huge Bee Gees fan joined me on Great. the show and uh we talked about it and he's just recently started uh Bee Gees and me podcast which is basically this <laughs> but Bee Gees and so yeah. he asked me to join him for his podcast uh, and uh we 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 did an hour episode of just him interviewing and us talking back and forth and he had some fun he had numbers comparing the Bee Gees and Springsteen like you know success like number of hit albums number oh, of wow. hit okay. singles and of course the Bee Gees wiped him away because Bruce has sure. never had a number one but he said like when you compare Grammys and awards he says Bruce wipes the floor of the Bee Gees because they just never really won that many Grammys versus Bruce. And I said, well, that's partly because I think the stigma of the 70s disco hurt the Bee Gees and among award things. So anyway, it's really interesting. And then- Great documentary, by the way. Oh, the, the, yes. The, the Bee Gees documentary. Oh, I've yeah. always liked the Bee Gees and yeah. I fell in love with the Bee Gees after that documentary. I absolutely agree. So the point of the story, Ryan, is afterwards he had said when he was on my show first he i said he said okay i'm gonna send you um 10 bg songs that you may not have heard so that you can enjoy and then mm -hmm. i said okay well i'll send you 10 springsteen songs you can enjoy and so afterwards he reached out to me goes you didn't send me 10 you sent me like 18 <laughs> but they're double and i went well I sent you the studio version. I sent you the live version sure. uh, because I want you to compare the two because the live experience is what in an, I know it's a cliche, but the reality is till you've seen Bruce perform live, you haven't seen Bruce, right? Like just yeah. hearing the album. And, um, uh, and so coming up in a couple of weeks on his podcast, uh, we each picked five songs and uh, he's going to do, this is a, on Spotify where we go back and forth. I picked a BG song. We discuss it. He gives the background to it. I tell my feelings. Then he picked a Springsteen song. And it's so funny, Ryan. Uh, one of the songs was Into the Fire. And he was yeah. talking about how much he loved that. And it was great. And he, and I mentioned, well, you know, it's right after 9-11. He goes, what? This song's about 9-11? 
holy crap, I love it even more now, <laughs> you know, because he, he didn't yeah. have got any context. Uh, and, you know, he, he also said, I'll see you in my dreams. And he says, this has got to be about Clarence, right? And I said, well, not directly. I said, but I said, this is the, the I said, as of now, this is the last song on, you know, the latest song on his latest album, right? The very last yeah. song on his latest album. So uh, hopefully we'll get more albums, but if not, this will be the final, at this point in his career, the final. And he was like, he just loved it. So um, so to go back to your point, right? Um, when I'm sharing a songs, I have to go and also check out, like Rosie's good, but listen yeah. to it live. Yes. You know, Drive all night is good, but listen to it live, right? New York Street, New York, uh, what's that? New New York City Serenade. Yeah. That follows Rosie. No one talks about that song, right? And I think it might be his best, like album, like Ender. I love yeah. that whole track, and I found it by accident because I was on vinyl. I just didn't turn off the record player after Rosie. I was like, oh, what? What is this song? Like, yeah. How come no one talks about this song? This song. And Backstreets, I feel like no one talks about Backstreets. Levi and we were just talking about this the other day. Is like, and it may because it's just on an album that's like full of amazing songs, but people forget about Backstreets for some reason. I don't, I don't hear it live ever. No one really mentions it in top five, top ten lists. I feel like, and Backstreets is one of the greatest songs he's ever like recorded. Hundred yeah. yeah, percent, amazing, absolutely. All right, twenty twenty two. We're going to get a tour. What are songs that you want to hear live that you haven't heard, excluding, obviously, Western Stars and Letter to You? All of us want to hear any of those he wants to pick live because we haven't got to hear it. There are some banger tracks on, and please don't shoot me, uh, Working on a Dream. Yeah. Um, like, I love this life. I'm working on a dream. I think it's an amazing track. Uh uh, like the, the uh, title track is really good. Uh, I haven't seen that stuff live. I would love yeah. to see that stuff. I've seen, except for Backstreets, I think I've seen all the hits. Yeah, live for sure. And then you know, seeing like the River Tour, you see a lot of other cool stuff. Um, I, hmm. I don't wait. No, I, I take that back. I haven't seen. I haven't seen in person Atlantic City live. I've only seen it like a million times, like on the live New York DVD. Yeah. Um, is there anything? Uh. Oh no! Um, oh my gosh! Oh my! Why am I drawing a blank right now? Oh my God, Jesse! Jesse, it's in my head right now. Uh, not not better days. Um, same. No, it's not uh, anything from Brilliant Disguise. I like Brilliant Disguise. I like to see that with the full band. Mm -hmm. um, does it fascinate you how a lot of his non E Street stuff? Like all the ingredients are there, but it's just missing that E Street sound. And you, it's like he knows, and you know, it's like a shared secret between you and Bruce that you both know how much better the song would be if the E Street band was playing it with you right now. And so, you're doing it, you're not doing it. <laughs> so, um, my, I have a, my friend Terry Smith, uh, who does the Music Talks podcast, which is where you pick a song from every decade you've been alive and share it. Mm -hmm. But he and I, monthly-ish, will have an episode where we talk about the latest Springsteen archive release. And he was at the London show, the Seeger Session show that they had released a few months ago. And so we were talking about it. And he, he said that he had, um, he had, it was one, he worked for Microsoft at the time. And so it was one of the few shows he said, I, where I actually went on Microsoft's dime because I was bringing a customer. He said, but I don't do that very often because one, for that very reason, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to bring someone who wasn't a fan, right? That it would be. And so this guy was a huge Springsteen fan, joined with him. And at the end of it, he looked at Terry and he said, that was fun, but it's just not the same, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right and i think that um as much as you the other band or uh western stars and i love the western stars film right but you do get that feeling mm -hmm. like well it's just not quite the same and how yeah. did the beauty of atlantic city 
from Nebraska has now turned into this wonderful E Street, you know, song that is great to hear. You know, and the yeah. right, the rumor is there is an E Street version of Nebraska out there, right? That you know, yeah. That you know, when mm. they, when before they decided they should send out the, you know, stripped version, and so that would be interesting to hear. Um, you know, look at open all night, right? They this on the band and then you put it with the seeker sessions all mm -hmm. of a sudden becomes this joyous you mm -hmm. know rocking you know you know epic of a song it's just crazy sure. how he does it oh um uh lucky town lucky town is the song i was trying to think of i love lucky town it's amazing i have the uh the the unplugged laser disc Yes. Um, and I, because oh, for anyone out there, I love laser discs. I collect laser discs. I have a massive laser disc collection and I have a few Bruce Springsteen laser discs. Um, yeah. Um, and, you know, and I'd like to hear him. And I think I touched on this last time. I, you know, because he does cover songs, I like to hear him cover some modern top 40 music and just yeah. put that little Bruce twist on it. A it would bit. be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know, and and, there, and there's there's certain bands that are geared for his sound for sure, like uh, the um, Gaslight Anthem. Uh, you know, like you're like, well, yeah, it's an obvious one, but I'd mm -hmm. like to see him do some like Lady Gaga stuff or like yeah. Adele music, and mm -hmm. put that like like Bruce grit and grind on it, man. Hundred percent, it'd be great. You know, they won't do this, but um, you know, Tony Bennett and Sinatra did duet you know, albums where they yeah. you know, filmed. Uh, Ray Charles, before he passed, did a, uh, a set of albums, uh, Genius Loves Company, which was, I really liked, which was had Ray Charles album. do document, you know, he did duets. So it would be interesting um, for Bruce to do that, you know, to yeah. have this modern, it, it would be fun to hear. Um, I don't think that's what he wants to do. But I think sure. it would be great to see. I, I agree. That'd be wonderful. Um, well, it's really cool just hearing music. Like, I think a lot of Tracy Chapman music, you're like, it feels like stuff that Bruce Springsteen forgot to write. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, yeah, I, I, there's some stuff out there. If you heard it in the right context, it would blow your mind. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, this is the second time we've talked. Is there anything I should have asked you that I haven't? Man, um, not that I can think of, but I will say, uh, and I'm not trying to, you know, stir the pot that it, it's just like an admission I feel like I have to make. I don't like Mary's Place. Okay. People love Mary's Place, and I don't like Mary's Place. And I think I've seen it live, maybe at every show. And I just like, please, can we end this song? <laughs> and get to the next song please please and it's also like it's a super long live song too yes um and then i feel like the odd man because everyone around me is having the best time but yeah we're going to mary's place like shut the fuck i hate this song so much um uh, i always skip it on the rising album um oh okay that's a question for you uh great album but what's the track that you skip are there any tracks you skip on great albums uh so I don't know if you've seen, you probably haven't, but there is a, I do a series of episodes called Songs of Your Life. And okay. I give you 11 questions and I will send this to you and we'll have you back on to do this. And it's okay. 11 questions, song you hate, song you think is overrated. Um, and they, it's all, you have to answer Springsteen lyrics, songs, but you can only use song once. So okay. you song that made you fall in love with Bruce, and song you love to hear live can't be the same one, right? Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, um, Jungle Land is the song that I don't get. <laughs> what? Oh my God! I know. Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. All right. I know. And every time I bring that up, Twitter like, oh, okay, Jesse. You know, it is the version of uh, I don't like fruitcake. And people like, sure. oh, that's because you've just really not ever had good fruitcake. Or, oh, well, you should try my fruitcake. Or they, people are like, oh, Jesse, you know, go into the room, put headsets on, and listen to Jungle Land and let it speak to you. And I'm like, I, I get that 
um, intellectually, I understand it's a genius song. I understand the way it's built. It's epic. I, the saxophone solo is amazing, but oh, it doesn't yeah. speak to me emotionally. It wow, just doesn't yeah. click to me emotionally. Uh, while Mary's Place, on the other hand, because um, out on the front porch brings me back time growing up in, um, you know, Rose Pine, Louisiana, where my grandparents owned a dairy farm. And we'd be sitting on the porch during the fall with wash tubs full of green beans or, or field peas <laughs> and you're you're shelling them so that they can freeze them and everyone's telling stories and talking um that mary's place to me brings that sense of community and family to me so it does so connect funny. to me but i've heard so many other people go like well i can't stand mary's place on the album um and then i like it a little more live but not really so you're not unusual right okay good it's just good. yeah but yes everyone always like jungle land what are you crazy so uh that's well you're also fine. lucky in the fact that that's the at the end of the album so you can just turn off the album yes yeah 100 percent. or like i will skip darlington county every single time mm -hmm. i listen to board of the usa yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna i'm gonna get past this one <laughs> yeah i i think i know uh i have like for high hopes there's four or five songs i will like if I would like I will play skip skip play skip skip hear of those uh I'm not a big um on letter to you I'm kind of skipping house of a thousand guitars yeah that's you know? that's a pretty annoying song yeah I, I may have mentioned this to you or 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 our buddy Levi there's some songs where like I don't know why he chose those words because they don't mm -hmm. fit the scheme, the rhyme scheme yeah. of the song. And it's mm -hmm. so frustrating where he forces an extra syllable in there sometimes. And I don't know why yeah. he does it. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So I think all of us have that songs where you kind of go, um, you know, um, I love Tunnel of Love. But I always skip "Ain't Got You." Like, I immediately go to track two. Wow! Yeah. Wow! That's a good one. Okay, yeah. I never thought about that one. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Uh, Tone of Love, interesting album, man. That dude, like every every other album, it's like I think I'm going to do my own thing, and it's so odd to follow Tunnel of Love, to follow Born in the USA with Tunnel of Love, or yes. to follow Darkness with nebraska yeah or like it's so yeah i don't it's really oh my yeah i don't know it's crazy well, you know and in, in, in terms of acting right like you think about uh people that you know actors chooses roles that go okay let me you know instead of building momentum i'm gonna and you know i know when you're successful right like do one for them and one for me one for them one for yeah. me right when you're accessible to go well and little Steven talked about that, how he he wished, like he left right before Born in the USA hit. He says, and what I should have done is stayed with the band. And you, he says, you everything builds on the next thing, on the next thing to build mm -hmm. agenda versus this we were building. We did, you know, we did Born to Run and we did Darkness and we did The River and like we were ready to go. And I went, oh, I want to go do my own thing. And it was like, <laughs> that was just not a smart decision, but, you know. Just so weird. He's in the videos. Yeah. Like, it's so odd to think that he's not on that tour. Yeah. Um, it yeah, is. It's, yeah. It is very weird. Um, so I know I asked you this last time. So, mm -hmm. but we've got to do the Mary question because that's how I end every episode. So, okay. um, yeah. <laughs> to, to recap, in case you uh, are a brand new listener, uh, Jay Armstrong is the honors English teacher from the Philadelphia area, just recently retired from teaching, but he would have his honors English class uh, break down Thunder Road, um, reading the lyrics, going through it at, in the poetry that it is. And at the end of that, he would ask this Mary get in the car. So Ryan, mm -hmm. I do not remember what your question was before, so you're allowed to change it. But does okay. Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? 
man. Uh, <laughs> um, I it's well. Oh, geez, we we could talk all day about if 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 Thunder Road is like this like getaway song, which he he says it's like the beginning of a journey, or if it's like an ill fated journey. You don't know. You really don't know if listening to the song, like wh- whatever mindset you're in, is what kind of song it's going to be. Yes, I don't. I don't. I've there's a part of me that says that no she doesn't and the whole song is like this hopeful dream sequence him selling her on the idea of it of getting into the car but no i don't i don't i'm gonna say no i don't i really don't think so did i send you the notes from the lady who basically said it was this um dark noir and if she gets in the car he's gonna kill her what the fuck? What? No. <laughs> what? I, I will send Why you the link. Uh, it was, it, yeah. Um, Bex uh, is a, she is a podcaster and um, I invite her on the show and she says, hey, uh, her, her, her podcast is putting college level analysis on children's um entertainment and the reason why is they have a three-year-old her and her husband and they've got to watch you know finding nemo for the 50th time and so they're 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 they started a podcast where they kind of do this college analysis tongue-in-cheek on children's entertainment and so she says i can go pretty deep i'm gonna go go bex and so (laughs) i will send you her notes like she's like this is this is scary. I mean, the, the, such violent, you know, uh, imagery. It, it is hilarious that, um, you know. Well, I mean, that, that that's like a real thing. Like, just being older and seeing media I used to love through a different filter and lens. Yeah. Uh, like, how, like, aggressiveness can be romanticized. Yeah. You know, 100%. Sure, like, like, my favorite movie of all time is Rocky. And it does make me uncomfortable when he's like, aggressively seducing her alone in his apartment you know and yeah. then you kind of rash like well they end up getting married and having a kid right. and this and that you know but like, i don't like hmm. if you did have you had no context of the sequels that would be a really uncomfortable sequel well and i love um i love aaron sorkin but that is a trope he does where the guy uh like in studio 60 right that mm-hmm. um the uh, um, Bradley Whitford. Really, really fun is, show. No one's seen. Yeah, yeah, that Bradley Whitford is pushing for, you know, the um, Amanda character, right? And and it is He's pursuing almost, her constantly. Yeah, yeah, and it could be stalking, but they write it like it's charming, and she ends up, you know, they they get happy, uh, and you know, so yeah, I think that, and you know. Um, Turner uh, American Movie Classics, right? Or is it is either AMC or TCM are doing mm-hmm. a films revisited like uh, Woman of the Year, the first Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn movie um, ends with her kind of giving up her job to be this domesticated wife because that's what she uh-huh. thinks Spencer Tracy wants and in context that's a horrible ending uh you know and so there's other things that uh you you know in context you go wow this is kind of strange and different um i had a wonderful uh todd goldberg is a writer and they do a a podcast and i'll literary disco is the name of the podcast and he and his two co um Hosts broke apart the original Tarzan the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs, the novel. And as a kid, I love that book. I, I, you know, I remember at 10 or 11 finding it in a used bookstore, reading it, adored it. And now when they talk about how the white, uh, not just European, um, you know, superiority and everything in the book, Mm -hmm. all about how not only are humans better, but Europeans are better than any other. Um, All of like, you've destroyed this childhood joy of mine. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, 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 Yeah. absolutely. That's that's right. It's what's called being woke because you're waking up. You're waking up. And then I, 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 people, uh, for anyone listening, I'm not afraid to say it. People who are like losing their shit over these like disclaimers on Disney plus or HBO, 
like they have to understand that that's how kids are viewing it now. Yeah. Like they're watching and understanding that, oh, this is really weird. So yeah. like those disclaimers help contextualize like, hey, we all know it's weird now, but we didn't know it was weird then. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, well said. Uh, any final thoughts, Ryan? Um, just that I love talking to you and I know I send you some controversial emails about people whose thoughts about Bruce, like the whole Jeep article. Yeah, um, that was a very like interesting that. article, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's not stuff that I, I necessarily believe, but I, I like seeing how people view Bruce Springsteen. Uh, it's not stuff that I entirely disagree with uh, a yeah. lot of times too. Like, uh, where, where do you draw the line? Uh, because we're all capitalists. So how... Mm -hmm how how can you prove how sincere you are sometimes um but uh no yeah i love love talking to you not just about bruce but just about anything fun uh mm -hmm. so i will i will come back anytime i will talk to you even off off here i will talk to you anytime. well yes we talked about that i would love to have you back on anytime we should make this a regular thing uh and yes i think by far in simple terms one of the things that i think that as a society is um and I mean this royal we, but I want to believe the very best in myself and believe in the very worst in you. Like, I don't want to give you the benefit of the doubt that you might have, you know, really strong feelings or do things, but I want you to believe that I mean things the very best. And uh, it does make things uh, sometimes a little crazy. And as we talked about with the GBAT, right, the, there's this yeah. diversity that, um, you know, you would have thought the biggest controversy would be, oh, Bruce sold out. No, it's either the far left is saying, how dare he talk about going in the middle with these jerks on the right, and the right mm -hmm. is going, how dare this guy talk about going to the middle when he wasn't asking about the middle when Trump was president, right? And so yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot who said it on Twitter, but someone said, uh, seeing the extremes of how Bruce's Jeep ad was, uh, the reaction tells you how far away from the middle we are as a country. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Um, at R, at Real RHP is your Twitter yeah. handle. Yeah. I did that because I noticed like a lot of celebrities were doing it. Yeah. I thought it'd be funny if someone normal like funny, me did it. Yes. Because I'm yeah. like, what other RHP would there be? But I am the real. Or HP. So there oh, we I love that. I um, I always think of um. Remember the comedian? I'm I, the comedian A. Whitney Brown, and he would used to say, "One day I want to be the Whitney Brown." Right now I'm A. Whitney Brown. I want the Whitney Brown. I always think of that. Uh, yeah, I'm Jesse W. Jackson. Um, I'm Jesse Wayne. If you grew up in Louisiana, but I used to get Jesse W. Jackson. W is for white, so you won't confuse me with the <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> Really I don't know. I don't know if that joke works anymore in new context, but you know. All right, works. very nice. Uh, if uh, anything you want to promote, anything you want to share? Promote? Um, nothing right now. If things are opening back up, though, which is nice. So yeah. hopefully next time we talk, I will have something to promote. But uh, yeah, as of right now, everything's still pretty much shut down in LA. So yeah. not, nothing quite yet. There you mm, go. Well. Uh, so I will hope your Clippers continue to do well. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm the Mavericks. I don't know how they're going to do. Rough season. Rough yeah, season. it is a rough season. So Luca, you know, doing well. And so we'll see what's going on and uh, hope everyone stays safe. Uh, thank you, my friend. And yes, you are welcome anytime. It's just always a joy to talk to you. Uh, we just, it, I, I agree with you. We could talk every week and not run out of things to say. I feel bad about your audience who want to just purely Bruce content because I went all over the place today. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, no problem. Listeners, thank you for listening. Um, please get in touch if you have feedback. You know, I always want to hear you. Uh, setlessingbruce at gmail.com. And uh, for now, remember to wash your hands. Remember to social distance. Ignore the Texas governor and follow Bruce's directive. Wear a mask and we will talk to you soon. Goodbye. All right. So funny story. Mm -hmm. um,